Welcome to the car guys and yes it's another one of our world famous Q&A episodes where we get to answer questions that you've sent to us on Instagram and YouTube as honestly and as humorously as we possibly can. This is the video that you're always looking forward to, I know you are. Uh, yeah it saves us doing an actual video, uh, makes it nice and easy for the crimbo time. Really easy, really easy, easy. to do. Easy. Perfect. So what we're going to do is go through all the questions you've sent us. There are hundreds, so we've had to trim them down a little bit. We obviously had to remove the ones where you call us dickheads, but then we focus on the real beauties. Mm, absolutely. And this year we have got an amazing selection of questions. You have outdone yourselves yet again. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here we are then, another year of Car Guys goodness and another Q&A episode to go through all your questions. And uh, as usual, we have done absolutely zero preparation for this, so most of these are completely off the cuff, which is the way that you love them. Exactly. So let's get on with it. First question is from Nature's Symphony, and he or she writes, would you consider getting a GTO Engineering short wheelbase 250? I mean, I probably would actually, if it wasn't for the fact that they were actually sold out and they're no longer doing them, I think probably, yeah, from what I've seen, you're talking about an exact replica of a 1960s classic Ferrari, mm. right? One of the all time greatest, which now probably costs, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight million. Let's try eight. Eight, eight million. Yeah and you're getting it for about 750,000. It's a yeah. modern car. GTO Engineering do, do lots of machining parts for classic Ferraris, so you can bet that when you look at it, everything is exactly Perfect. as if it came out the factory like today. The continuation series, Aston Martin have done it with the DB5. Yep. This feels very similar. It does feel a little bit like, give us a million quid and we'll give you something that resembles a 250, I don't know. But yeah, I think, you know, from a, from a point of view of, if anyone's gonna do it, they're, they're the chaps that should be doing it. Exactly. That's a beautiful engine, that V12. You can have it as a four litre as well. So yeah, I think um, I think I would if I had a million quid. It would definitely be on the list. It is quite a tantalising prospect. Mm. We will be driving a real one for Drive Every Ferrari, so we'll be able to get that experience and be able to know exactly what it's like to drive one of these cars. But uh, yeah, probably it'd be the sort of thing we'd go after, I think. Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Right, so next on the list, Jaff Foley. <laughs> Jafoli? Could be. Could be. Uh, prediction for the new supercar industry in 10 years' time after ICE cars are banned. Yeah, well, basically, you're going to end up with loads of Scalectrix cars, aren't you? You're going to end up with loads of cars that have got 2,000 theoretical brake horsepower. Uh, they're very low, they're very sculpted, uh, they're very quiet, or with some strange, you know, engineered hums or whizzes. And they're basically all going to be electric or hydrogen, or maybe it's just going to be synthetic fuels, in which case you'll just be driving the same cars we are right now. Yeah, I don't think there's gonna be, I think 10 years is too, too short a time scale. Mm. I think there's always gonna be some loophole somewhere, which is gonna be like, if you only produce 10 of these a year, then you can still use V12s with twin turbo charges in them <laughs> and, and nitrous. There's always gonna be that kind of thing going on. What I'm looking forward to is the roller skate idea where you can take it to a like a, a coach builder yeah. and say, this is the body that I want on it. 2000 horsepower car design of your own choice. I quite like that idea. Yeah, like rim under underpinnings yeah yeah i mean it'll be a, a return to the coach building sort of heyday won't yeah, it yeah of the that's what like that's why i think it might go yeah that's mm. why i think it might go and if it goes that way that's not a bad thing yeah i think the main thing is not to be scared about the future because with synthetic fuels there's every chance that we'll be able to drive all the cars that we love and know but just with a different type of fuel same petrol stations same petrol tanks everything carries on as normal. So I think that is a very real possibility because we know that Porsche are heavily involved in it in Volkswagen and we know that it's just a matter of scale so that they can then bring down the costs. If you've got electric supercars and people are interested in electric and they want to carry on, hey, you should be able to do that anyway. And if something like hydrogen or some other type of fuel is developed in the meantime, then it'll just be shoehorned into something sexy looking. So I think still the future of super and hypercars is still assured and I think still very exciting. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Flavio C asks, quite rightly, what's your favorite BMW from the 90s? Now, the main thing I should highlight here is that I already 
have my favorite BMW from the 90s and it is my 1998 BMW E38 750. So I am bound by honor and ownership to say mine would be that one. I'm gonna go with the same engine. Oh. In an eight series. Oh. The 850 would be my choice. That oh. is an absolute, oh. I love the 850. It's so amazing. It's ridiculous, isn't it? It's... It is so stupid. Uh, and, they're, and they're fairly reasonably priced now as well. Oh, yeah, I love sure. those because you've got flip up headlights. Always a win. You've got a ludicrously massive engine in a two door car, <laughs> which is brilliant. And you're basically driving it Re fully reclined and you've just got this massive command deck of buttons all around you perfect car oh ben penna gonzalez asks your thoughts on how much brake horsepower you really need for fun driving yeah i'm gonna say about 500 to 550 is enough i think fully to be properly leery to be properly scary and to have a lot of great fun on normal public roads i.e the 991.2 gt3 touring that sort of that, that sort of, of levels that for me i think is perfect any more than that and you start having traction control on constantly you risk spinning off into a hedge and exploding not for me i'm going to go slightly lower i reckon around 350 to 400 is probably all you need for british b road blasting any like you say any more than that You've got to concentrate really, really hard. What I like to do is use full throttle. I'm a big fan of using full throttle. <laughs> really? Much more than 500 horsepower or 400 horsepower. You're not using full throttle for very long because you're wetting yourself because <laughs> start, things start moving very quickly. So, yeah, I reckon about 350 to 400. So what sort of car would that be then? It's the BMW 1M. Oh, yes. That is a perfect example of size and power output for a British road. Fletch writes in and says, is Jason tempted by a VW split screen bus? And what do we also think of the VW ID buzz? I love the split screen bus. I love the way it looks, absolutely amazing. Uh, they are so astronomically expensive for what they are. I'm not really gonna pay that much money for them. I don't, they, the, I don't see the value in it. And what do we think of the new ID buzz? I think it looks fantastic. I think if I was gonna have an electric recreational vehicle, I think that could well be the one. I think it just looks super cool. It's nice and retro, very nicely styled and perfect to go out there and do that camper vanny type thing. And yet hideously expensive again. So yeah. 50 grand plus yeah. for a camper van. But it's electric. Is, it's electric. Electric camper van, cool, sexy. Yeah. So in summary then, yes, we like it. We do. Alan Gordon, which one of Jason's project cars would Damien pay to finish? <laughs> pay to finish or pay to have scrapped? Two very separate questions. <laughs> uh, and also, so many to choose from. <laughs> so so many. much choice. Oh, so much rusty old guff. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think it would have to be, I mean, it wouldn't be anything with MG in the badge. Oh, sad so times. So, be getting rid of all of that. Um, probably, it wouldn't be necessarily the E type. It would that's actually, already finished. Well, is it? Ish. Is it though? Well. Mm -hmm. Sore point. I think it would have to be the Toyota Celica rally car. Oh, that, nice. That I think oh, that's would be good. the one because I'm a big fan of Sega Rally yeah. and I'm a big fan of that colour scheme and livery on that car and that, that would be the one. Yeah, that car will be coming to the channel. Um, um, not, I would soon is probably too early a word for it. Late 2025? Uh, yeah, when it's properly finished. Um, about the same month as the as the Tesla Cybertruck. Yeah, about that kind of month. Mr. Marrow asks, do you think our roads are too congested to enjoy driving? Yes. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, Around they're... here, especially, yeah. in the Essex HQ, <laughs> it is absolutely ridiculous. You cannot go anywhere without being in some sort of line of traffic. So in the UK, basically the south is instant death. And then as you go further up, the Cotswolds, there's some nice bits and it can be quite quiet. Then as you go into Wales, there's loads of stuff. Scotland, loads of stuff. Isle of Man, yes. And, that, oh, and Yorkshire, obviously, Yorkshire, where, where yeah. you know, the car guy's new HQ is located. Yes, yes, yes. Um, there's some great roads. So you can find them, but just where we happen to be is pretty much like the worst, yeah. Okay, Stanley Miller. If you could only add one car to your collection in 2023, what would it be? 
It's difficult, that one. Yeah, it is, isn't it? No, not really. I know exactly what it's going to be. What's it going to be? GT40 replica. Oh, God, not this. You're still going on about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, I want a GT40 replica. Is that actually going to happen? Well, maybe not. I'm going to add another car. He said thinking about Mark II Escorts. But if I'm going to add another car, then I think a GT40 replica is, is where I'd like to be. So, or something with a stonking great big V8 in it. I, I'm missing a V8. Yes, you are. I'm yes. missing a V8 and I need I need one in my life. I think my answer is going to be, I, I, I've got three. That three? I, well, if I, I, I find it difficult to bring it down because they're different types of cars. So if I was going to add one car, it would be uh, a Ferrari 812 Competizione oh. at the high end. Nice. A Saab 900 Turbo. You'll never buy one of those. Crazy I must end. have sent you about a thousand of those. And every time you go, I really want one. And I go, well, here's a lovely one. You go, I, I didn't buy it. But they make my winky fit <laughs> whenever I see them. And the other one, a bit of a bit left field, oh, would be uh, an original MX-5 in blue. You absolutely cannot find any of them unmolested anywhere in the I world. Know. So that's never happening, I is know. it? Clearly, the last thing I need is another two-seater convertible. <laughs> Gianni Cumbo, what is the likelihood of you owning a Ferrari Icona series? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Honestly, that's like <sighs> et tu brute. Yeah. yeah, well, given given the fact that I was offered an Icona series and then said no. sort of couldn't have it and said no, probably I would say the likelihood... It's very, very small indeed. Yeah, you don't you don't turn those things down and then get re-invited later for another one. No, they can't they can't bring the horse's head back out of the bed. No. Once it's there, it's there, I yeah. think. <laughs> Benzina Paul asks, in your drive every Ferrari series, which model has surprised you and tempted to purchase? Well, it's quite an easy one so far because it's the 599 GTO. That's the one that's thrilled me the most, even though I've never been that fussed about them looks wise and I've never really considered them before, particularly when they were a lot cheaper. Uh, <laughs> I just think, story, story of, of our lives. Story of our lives. Yeah. Uh, I just think uh, it, so far it's been the perfect mix of sound, acceleration, drama, and technically affordability. <laughs> but yeah. Te I, technically affordability. Yeah. yeah. David W, purely on driving experience and not emotion, 458 Speciale Aperta or 675 LT? Now, this is a really, really, really difficult question because they are completely different experiences. Yep. Utterly different experiences. Take the emotion out of it completely, but they are, I would say, I don't know, I'm just going to, 675. There is something about that car, when you hook it up and you've yeah. got it in a set of, that is just on a whole different level. The 458 is good fun and it's squirrely and it's a bit yep. thing, but there's something about when you get that 675 hooked in, that is just phenomenal. Yeah, I think it's that's almost the perfect answer. The 675 LT is like a rocket ship. It's yeah. just so dialed in and it gives you an experience of being in a jet fighter. And, and it's very, there's very few cars that give you that experience and that's one of them. So yeah, if you are taking away basically the Ferrari's trump card, which is a motion, <laughs> I would say probably 675 LT wins the day so we, yeah. we are in agreement we are in on that agreement one. oh shocker yeah but that but that surprised you didn't it eh? yeah. moog star 16 is there a porsche 959 test on the way is there technically yes if i can strong arm you paul then uh, then yes there will be there is one around there is one quite a famous one that you'll see on uk roads um that the owner has said we can get our grubby little hands on. Um, Even after watching all our videos. Yeah, I know. I know. What, are, what are the odds? Yeah, not um, me. So hopefully, yes, we do have a route into one. And uh, if he is still a very nice gentleman and still happy for us to do it, uh, then yes, there is. An interesting Porsche question now. 964 or 993, which do you think you would buy for fun and driving and value? Well, actually, out of those two, I would probably say... 
Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I don't think there's any such thing as classic Porsche value anymore. <laughs> there's no, you can't. That's just not a thing. The 964 is so iconic of a shape. The 993 is still, even to this day, still a bit jelly mouldy for me. I'm not, I don't really like the headlights and things like that on it. I remember at the time, the 964, when it was around and they replaced it with the 993, I remember thinking, wow, the 993 is so much better in every way. It's incredible. But you're right. As time goes by, you appreciate the angles and the sharpness of the 964 and the stance of it, which mm. is way better. And the 993 does start to look all a bit sort of awkward. Wobbly. Yeah, yeah, wobbly. So I think probably 964 for me in terms of... The 993 is a better driving car. There's no doubt about it. But the 964 is still fantastic i think you get a lot of fun out of the 964 because it's just that much more like the classic 911s of old and in terms of value that's pretty tricky because the 964s are all being bought up by singer to turn into special custom hot rods so you can't really find any for sale at the moment nope. 993s you can find for sale but the but the value uh you know the prices of them are increasing hugely i mean that 993 4s that i've got i mean that's that's gone up in value considerably since yeah. i bought it and i never expected that valentino de more yeah valentino de more amazing uh what were your favorite cars when you just got your driving license right so for me that would be the lamborghini countach that i had on my wall as a poster or the sierra sapphire 4x4 yeah had one of those, or the 959, or the 911 Rough Ooh. Yellow Bird. Oh, yes. Because, you know, those are the things that I lusted after the most. I think when I got my driving license, it was more attainable ones was the ones I lusted after. Right. So, you your know... Escorts, your Escorts, Caprice. Well, I mean... Your metro I, Turbos. Not your Metro Turbos, no. No one should ever lust after that car. Uh, no, I really lusted after the Toyota Supra Turbo. Oh, yeah, nice. Absolutely loved that sort of standard. I lusted after the Honda NSX. Mm. There's a lot of Japanese stuff that was big in the 90s, and that's when you started to see them. Okay. Mazda RX-7, oh. that rotary engine, yes. swoopy one. That I massively lusted after. They seem to be, and it may be just because we're very old now, there seems to be a lot more going on when we were kids at 17, 18 in the car world. A lot more interesting, different stuff coming out than there possibly is now. Another question here, 997 Turbo, would you? Well, actually, I already have. I used to have a mm. Turbo S, which I absolutely adored. That silver. car was mental. Mm, yeah, lovely. GT Silver, so that lovely silver. Mm. Yeah, absolutely love that. So, uh, So the answer for me would be... Yes. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the 997 Turbo as well. I think that was a lovely car. I think you'd look good in one of those. Yeah. Okay, Modern Classic Car Club. Any more future episodes on the Rolls Royce? Well, funny you should ask that, Modern mm. Classic Car Club, because it's literally parked over there, and we're going to be going out in it in about 20 minutes. <laughs> if you had to buy an electric car, what would it be and why? Well, I've already bought an electric car. Oh, God. Look at him. See? Smug. This is smug. Is it smug, yeah. though? Or is it, in fact, foolish? <laughs> so I've bought a Fiat 500 uh, electric, which is, as I've said many, many times on this channel, the perfect use of electric is round town, doing little tiny journeys, pottering around, so you don't use a lot of fuel anyway. You haven't got to worry about going to the petrol station. Uh, you just charge it at home, it's absolutely spot on and perfect. And that's what I've got. I've got a little Fiat 500 convertible, electric, and it is wonderful. Is it? Yeah, it's really, really, really good. Are we ever going to see a review on this channel? Mm, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and then and, and also I've got a hybrid, so the Volvo is hybrid. Yeah, I mean, ba Jason basically is the future of motoring, whereas I'm just some claggy old dinosaur. I mean, you might as well ask me if what dishwasher I want to buy. I suppose if you're going to push me... To the, the new electric Rolls-Royce makes sense. That Be makes so much sense. Why is it taking them so long? Exactly. They should have been there at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, that, that does make a lot of sense. But the main difference between myself and Mr. Jason here is that yeah. lifestyle-wise, he has a need for an electric car. He's got the sort of things, the sort of jobs, the sort of trips that are perfect for that, whereas I just don't. The only time I ever drive is for specifically for pleasure. 
it's it's not a mundane chore it's yeah. not a commute so every journey therefore that i want to undertake has got to be special so that's why probably i'm going to be uh, one of the last if not the never to adopt <laughs> electric cars because of course by the time we get near to the point where it will be a crucial decision to make I'm pretty sure science will have uh, found some solutions for us. Well, let's be honest, it's not like you don't have cars that... You don't have to buy a new car, do you? Exactly. You'll be able to buy ice cars for... Carry the one. If I go in. Ever. Level 80 Toast asks, favourite car under 50 grand? Well, yes, kind of, we've both got one, haven't we? Well, GR Yaris is 33 so that probably gets my vote yeah but there's not so. there's actually not that many cars <laughs> less than 50, 50 000. grand these days doesn't really buy you a lot does it mm. this is possibly the best question we've ever been asked because obviously ever. it's right up our street yeah yeah duffage asks when you two are out in a red ferrari which one of you is jamie blake and which one of you is fender baum <laughs> where's he gonna sit well it's oh. so obvious, surely <coughs> yeah. there's not even any surely. question. It's got to be obvious. Jamie Blake, Fenderbaum. Every minute of every day. <laughs> Always. Because if I had enough time, I would take those rosary bleeds and uh, stuff them up your nose. These bleeds? Dan Reed Jazz says, do you still wish the F12 TDF was in your collection? Yes. Oh, sorry, not, not my question, sorry. No. Oh. No. No, no, I don't have... I, I love the look of the TDF. It's absolutely gorgeous. But for some reason, I don't have any problem with it not being in the garage. Wow. James F. Moran asks, when will we see more of Jason's cars? You've seen... You've literally seen... All right, so there's the I, fear... I think, I think moving. You know, oh, mo oh, moving? On oh, roads, no. driving, having no. fun in them. No, I don't... Do it. See, previous question about is it too congested to drive in this country? So, yeah, driving them is not a thing. And also it's quite hard to drive them when all the wheels are off yeah. and they're in bits. Yeah, they are in various different places dotted around in various different workshops. Uh, they will all come back at some point, I'm fairly certain. More detailing and car care, free advert there. Oh, is see what the, you did. Is the Mercedes subscription for heated seats a piss take? Now... I thought it was only BMW that were doing this. So did I. I was about to say that. So if anybody, anybody, who wants you to subscribe to have something that's already fitted to a car that you've purchased can frankly do one. We all need to rise up, basically, and say no by not buying these cars, refusing the subscriptions, just making sure this little trend which they're trying to get go ends immediately. Immediately. Mac Tools Loughborough, another, oh, another advert. advert, lovely. Yeah. Uh, are you Invoices pair... in the post. <laughs> are you pair, are you two characters going to do a car meet with your subscribers? Now, uh... there's a very good chance that we are. We're, Possibly. We're currently working on a an idea to uh, to make this happen. So, yeah, keep stay tuned into the channel. But 2023, we are hoping to do quite a large scale event uh so next question will mclaren survive yes of course they'll survive they will, will because aston will martin survived yeah continues to survive you know all of these car companies will survive because there's always going to be people out there with more money than they know what to do with that either want to save them keep them going eccentric billionaires eccentric basically. billionaires i think they deserve to because of the history and the brand and all that they could be. I'd like to see them survive without a doubt. Definitely it's tough times. Definitely they're always up against it. They're under sell or buy back or rent back items, property, cars. But uh, I would like to see them survive and I'd like to see them come up with a, with a winning car and also a winning dealership structure which gives people confidence. Luxury Exotics Photography writes, what offer would you take in order to sell your 458 Speciale Aperta? Simple answer, no offer. No. Forget it. The one car you will never sell. I've already turned down a million quid when I first got it. <laughs> Oh, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> Tennis Tycoon asks, would you ever consider a 918 Spider? I think yes, I would. I think, it's, I think it's cool. I, I, you know, we didn't like the Carrera GT that much, but the 918 has been around long enough to be proven. It works well. It's a brilliant it's hybrid, blend. though. Yeah, but I, I think, you know, if you're going to go with something, then go with Porsche, I say. Oh, so that over the LaFerrari, then? 
I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Have you ever bumped one car into another while manoeuvring in the garage? I have never bumped one car into another car. No. You've bumped cars into other bits, though, haven't you? I mean, I might have bumped cars into garages, <laughs> but not into <laughs> another car. So technically, technically, no. no. I've gently pushed a car to make more room. Into another car. Into it, just to, you know, just so they touch. I've done that, but, but I've never... Just so it just flexes the bumper, just cracks the paint on it, yeah. yeah just, just a just little not, flex. Just not, you know, but no. Yeah. Not really. Just the tip. Just, just put the tip in. <laughs> when is Jason buying his first Ferrari? I think more to the point is what, what Ferrari would Jason buy? for his first Ferrari. I think you will buy a Ferrari. Uh, yeah, I think I probably will at yeah. one point. I think I will definitely buy one. I would probably say it's gonna be a 328. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, and and I know the Magnum Ferrari is not a 328, but I like the 328 more than I like the 308 because it's just slightly... More muscular. Yeah, it's got a little bit more about it. So yeah, before you all start about, Magnum didn't drive a 328. Yes, I know, I know, okay. Not Stripe Ferrari 458 asks, <gasps> Will you tour the United States of America? Yes. Yeah, I think we were, we, we were so close at the beginning of COVID, weren't we? We were like, okay, let's get this trip planned. We're off to LA. We're gonna go up Highway 1. We're gonna do loads of shizzle around there. Probably take in Pebble Beach, all that kind of stuff. That was literally in the bag. And then someone got sick and then the whole planet shut down yeah. and we kind of haven't done anything with it since. Mm. So Yes, definitely. I mean, as part of Drive Every Ferrari, I've got to get to California because there's a load waiting there. Mm. Uh, I'd really like to do Texas. Never done Texas. Mm. I would love to do that. I'd really like to do a lot of the Midwest. I think they'd just be fantastic. Florida, we've got to go back to because there's a yeah. Car Guys fan there with a car there collection. Who a wants... massive car collection. Yeah. So, yes, the answer is definitely yes. I would say over the next two years, we'll, we're going to get around as much of it as we can. P. Barry Ferreira asks, pretty good question actually, if you could uninvent a feature of a car what would it be now i've got my answer yeah you've got your answer yeah if we both say it together yeah it's either going to be genius or a garbled mess but then we'll go into it ready okay. so three two one Late stop assist. start technology that is one big pile of shit. interesting mm. good so for me stop start technology the fact that the engine cuts itself off when you come up to a junction in order to save fuel that is the worst thing I find because modern cars, you can't turn it off uh, or you've got to remember to turn it off every time by pressing a button every time you get in the car, which is the most annoying thing in the world. And I just hate the idea of this because I'm not interested in saving a pipette of fuel. <laughs> every... Look, no, you don't own a car that, that uses a pipette of fuel. Good Lord. You mean a bucket. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not interested in saving a bucket of fuel every time I stop at a traffic light. And also, I'm from the generation that if you pull up to a junction and your car cuts out, <laughs> it's broken down. So every time it happens, it shits me right up. So I hate that. Yeah. I do not like it at all. That's the one thing. But interestingly, you've gone for another one. So come on. Yeah, lane assist. Yes. Because if you don't know it's on... Now, I don't use an... Okay. So it's early in the morning, you're on the motorway, you're hacking along at 70 miles an hour, no one else around, and in front of you is a lorry, and you want to pull out, do you just pull out? You don't need to indicate, there's no one behind you. You don't need to indicate to the lorry because he's not paying attention, he's probably asleep. So you just pull out, but you can't pull out, can you? No. Can you? <coughs> because the steering wheel, because <coughs> the car starts <coughs> fighting you, like you're doing some weird manoeuvre. And then you think, oh my God, it's broken, what's going on? And you counteract the steering, and then suddenly, as you cross the lane, it releases itself, and you go flying off into the barrier. No. Wrong. Turn it off. Don't need it. We've got to do we a are. full episode. Honestly, we got that's to, ridiculous. Because we've got so much vitriol about these things, and you're going to love it, because yeah. we're going to say lots of sweary things. <laughs> yes, sweary You things. love the sweary things. What the f*** is this? So, yeah, so that, that kind of concludes yeah. all of our questions. Yeah, thank you very much for obviously sending us all your questions. It's been 
just so entertaining for us to just go through and and work out exactly what we feel how we feel about what you're writing to us but thank you so much for sending them all in for interacting with the channel and obviously for a whole year's worth of your viewership and hopefully your subscription yes which subscribe. is which is free obviously yeah it's free just mm. click the button doesn't mm. mean anything you go find us every week anyway so just click the button <laughs> and then go back and watch all our other videos um, 10,000 times. Yeah. That would yeah. be good. Don't forget to subscribe, ding that notification bell for when we have another film uploaded. Find us on all of the social medias. Don't forget the merch. Find that on our website. And there'll be another Car Guys episode next week.